a taste challenge, Sazerac Rye. Facing off against the venerable old Overholt. Okay, uh, this is another one of those double ups. Today is a triple up. Oh, it's gonna go on through March, through May. I don't mind though, doing double ups, triple ups, as long as I, what I mean by that is I'll do it for a day. I know I can't do it, you know, but I just can't do too many. I'll be like, oh, where am I? Where are you? Slurring and everything. But this one is a very old brand called Old Overhaul. It's in the, it's in the current Jim Beam Suntory bottle. You can tell it's a Jim Beam bottle because it looks just like, well, just go to a liquor store and check. Beam's eight star, Kessler. Um, who else got the same 750 milliliter bottle? Old Crow, Old Granddad, Old Granddad Bottle and Bond. So that's the bottle. Now it's got the red cap. This is the new red cap. And I didn't know what that meant. I just thought they changed the label a little bit. Didn't look like much of a change. It really wasn't. Except the man went from kind of smiling like a grin to a frown. They say a frown. I don't think it's really. He's just like. To me, he's just thinking, you know, he's thinking. It's like he's pensive. He's thinking, is my company uh, ever going to get bought out? <laughs> and it did. So now it's produced by Beam Suntory. But it started as Abraham Overholt Distilling Company. He was called Abram. He lived in Iraq. And then he went to Canaan and married Elizabeth. And his name got changed to Abraham. <laughs> now, and he had a son named Isaac. <sighs> whose name got changed to Israel. <laughs> All right, now, um, they had, two, had Jacob and Esau. All right, anyway, uh, so Abraham Overhaul went to Pennsylvania and he started a company called Overhaul Distilling and the relics of the distillery are still there. Somebody made a YouTube video where they were rummaging around in there. Trespassing, if you want to call it, but um, wasn't anything in there, just old junk, some old equipment, some old tanks. But it's, I guess dangerous to go walking around in there, but it was pretty, it was actually very interesting. But it went went under. <coughs> but uh, Beam Jim Beam Company, Beam Suntory today bought the assets to it. So now we have old overhaul and old overhaul bottled and bond 100 proof, which I don't yet have. Are there any other old overhaul variants? This I do not know. There was an 80 proof chill filter, age three years. This is 86 proof non-chill filtered, age three years. A little bit different, a little stronger. Is it better? I don't know. I have the 80 proof black black cap, and I'll, I'll do that next time we come around to Rye and to see if it's a difference. Do a blind taste test. Probably be a little different. Now the competitor, then the newer one of the newer kids on the block. Sazerac Rye. It's not a new company. The company's been around since the 1840s. Handy uh, and Peshawds. And then I think they merged and became Sazerac. Sazerac Rye. Now, oh, the price. $15.98 at Walmart. $15.98 at Walmart. Yep. $15.98 at Walmart. Best price around. I think even Total Wine didn't have it beat. Here's Sazerac Rye, $17.99 at all the stores around here for the last year, $17.99. Everybody was excited when it was $19.99, but then it was like a price war. And everybody was saying, oh, we got it for $18.99. Now it's like universal, $17.99 to, uh, because they don't want to get undercut, you see. It's pretty popular in Louisiana. Now I see in other states, people pay like $30 a bottle, $35. But um, not here. Okay, let's get on with this. I wouldn't be wearing a shirt right now. It's 81 degrees. I'd be just out like you in the heat, you know, swimwear, summerwear. But on the video, of course, I wear a T-shirt. But uh, it's warm. I, I say watch when it's 22 degree cold freezing weather, which burnt a lot of my plants. I don't have to cut those down. My father said, what you mean they got burnt? I said burnt by the cold. Oh, yes, he understood. I didn't protect them because I knew they would survive. That big fern, 
that palm plant, all I got to do is cut the leaves off that are burnt. They'll grow back. No problem. The ferns, mow them over with a lawnmower. They'll grow right back in a month. Stronger than ever. Because what doesn't kill them makes them stronger. <laughs> I heard that on. All right. Um, ooh. I don't think I actually believe that that statement. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. What if you got run over by a dump truck and it didn't kill you, but you were infirmed for life? You wouldn't be stronger, would you? Okay. You said, no, it'd be mentally tough. I would grow strong through my, my suffering. Okay. That, that's possible. Now, hold on a second. I'll be right back. So, oh, thank you. Shout out back to you. Drinking a um, natural ice. That's a good choice. I almost bought that this past week, but I ended up buying. Um, I wish Sazerac Rye was sold in Georgia, too. Are you sure it's not sold in Georgia? Did you call a company? You might want to call them. They might tell you about something you didn't realize. Um, I ended up buying uh, Dos Equis Ambar, the new bottle design. It's a sharp new label. And I did a double down. I don't know how it came out. There was kind of long. I mean, the double downs are long. People want them to be long and in depth. But I had done some taste challenges previous. So it might seem kind of wishy, you know what I mean? Kind of wishy and kind of washy. But it did come out nice. I mean, I, in my mind, I was thinking this is coming out pretty nice, except I broke the glass at first wasn't anything to do with taste challenges. Just I was putting all the stuff on the counter, like to get it organized and my elbow hit the glass. You know, you see something happen and you can't stop it. And when it, it fell over, it shattered on the counter. I said, oh, 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 I said, now I got one Heineken glass left. If you use these glasses enough, they're going to break. Like John Anili, who's commenting right now, gave me a wonderful gift, four Glen Cairn glasses, but they all broke. They were so thin. I would say flimsy, but it's a gift, so they're thin. I have called and used a location finder. The closest bottle is 433 miles away. Oh, no. So those were wonderful glasses, but they were so fragile. That's the bright word, fragile. And I was careful with them. I was so careful washing them and everything, but it was like the slightest little, like I had one outside I was doing a review, and it just tipped, and it hit just like, like that. I said, look at this. Oh, but I got a lot of whiskey glasses. They're just not the uh, definitive, you know, what the fancy people use. Okay, I'm going to do a screen share and show y'all Sazerac Rye for a minute. And then we're going to do the taste challenge. So here's Sazerac's website, the new and improved sort of website. They don't show all the products anymore. They used to show everything they made. I guess they figured people weren't looking at that. They're looking at their premier stuff. They didn't realize I was looking at. It. So here we go to the top. They show a lot of brands you see, but here's Sazerac Rye. The character of New Orleans. Talking about the Mississippi River and all of this. There's a picture of the bottle. Talking about the Sazerac cocktail. That's why they made this rye whiskey for the Sazerac cocktail. It actually replaced two other whiskeys that they used to own called Old Superior Rye. There was something called Old Superior. And I uh, can't remember the other one. And then this one came into play. I don't know. Shucks. All right. The one and only New Orleans original Sazerac rye whiskey symbolizes the tradition and history of New Orleans. 
Now they say rye whiskey dates back to the 1800s, but it doesn't say this one. This is the whiskey that started it all. Yeah, well, uh, what they mean is rye whiskey started it all, not this particular brand. I don't think this brand hit the market until 2004, around 2004. That's why I put circa, meaning around that time. Aroma, the fragrances of clove, sweet, vanilla, anise, and pepper flavor. The taste has subtle notes of candy, spice, and crisp citrus finish. The big finish is smooth with hints of licorice. Uh, and then they show in a glass. And then, then they give you with others, with food, Legacy to Forge, which is their fancy pants brands. But that's okay. I've never had Ezra Brooks. Yes, I do like Baltic Porters. Oh, it's appealing, all right. Fruit cake in a bottle, more or less. All right, so here we go. Enough's enough. Time to, time to get it going, you all. Got to be careful. Though. If you notice, the, the one in my left hand could be to your right. It's darker. This one is more gold. And that one is more amber, like tan. Which one is that? Old. Oh, the oh, this the Sazerac. So the old. Hmm. All right. Uh, did I pour them in the right glass? <laughs> yeah, that's dark. I thought I did it right. All right, it's dark. Oh, that's right. The old overhaul, it's not dark. That was the um, the Jack, Dan Jack Daniels Tennessee whiskey that's dark. Overhaul rye. Okay, OR, overhaul rye. Yeah, so it's lighter. Yeah, well, it's only aged three years, you see. Um, and this one, people say is aged about six years. They don't really know. Oh, here's what I forgot to show you. Watch. Oh, I was going to show you there's an 18-year age. It said it on the uh, web page. Web Forgot to show you. There's an 18-year age. Try finding that. I have done Comez. Comez is awesome. I have a review posted. I love that thing. It's up there. The hat is primo because I want it now. I bought this hat. <laughs> I bought this cap at the Houston Brewery Tour. I made videos of that tour, a little short, about two minute videos of the whole tour. You know, if you put them in order, you'll see the whole brewery tour. They don't give it anymore. So it's a historical record because it wasn't long after I stopped going, it wasn't long after I visited that they gave up doing tours. Apparently my opinion was that they didn't have enough people going to the tours. I just think they had this beautiful gift shop, beautiful, uh, event center, uh, hospitality room, wonderful professional uh, service staff and no customers. So I was the only one on the tour. It was a Tuesday morning, 10.30 a.m. But still, if you go to St. Louis at 10.30 a.m. on a Tuesday when there's no scamdemic, there'll be more people than they could fit on the tour. You know what I'm saying? They'll have a full group, and then they'll say, okay, wait till 11 o'clock. Believe me, it won't be one person on a tour. No way. What do you think about, oh, I don't discuss that company. That company doesn't exist in my mind. Okay. So let's not even talk to them about them. Oh, I'd like to try the barley wine. So we're not talking about that New Orleans brewery. As far as I'm concerned, they don't even exist. Okay. Oh, let me mix it up a little bit more, just to be sure. Who's going to win? I would assume the uh, Sazerac's going to win. Okay, now I'm telling you, I paid $17.99 for the Sazerac, and I paid $15.98 for the old overhaul. 
which around here is the normal price, but I don't think you're going to find it for, for $17.99. I just see people all around the United States paying $30. And when I tell them, they think, oh, you know, that's incredible. Either that or they think I'm just making it up. I'm not making it up. Scam them. Scam them. All right. Whoa, that's a full nose of of whiskey luxuriness, luxuriousness. Do I prefer rye whiskey over bourbon whiskey? I surely do, and I'm gonna tell you why. It's just a personal preference of one grain over the other. I prefer rye. I like the spicy rye grain. I'm not too thrilled with corn. I like corn. I have corn chips on the, in the cabinet. I eat corn grits. Eat corn flakes cereal. But to drink it, you say, well, you drink Miller High Life made with corn syrup. Yes. But I don't know, that bourbon, it just screams corn grits. Oh, I buy them and all that. Do taste challenges, try them out, do uh, video reviews and everything. But I just, I prefer rye. I'm telling you, I, I like bourbon. I like it. I prefer rye more. I prefer rye. This is more mellow and muted. <laughs> Both of them, you get peppery rye spice. Think about a Reuben sandwich. Oh, well, just go to the store and buy a loaf of rye bread, and then you'll see what I'm talking about. It's an unusual spicy product. If you've never had rye, well, it's almost impossible to describe it to you, I have, I have to say. It's like trying to describe tequila to people. Agave has an unusual and, um, and frankly, a unique flavor. I was saying, well, it's kind of like roasted bell pepper. I mean, it isn't the same, but I didn't know what else to approximate it to. So when I tasted te tequila, did it shock me in the flavor? No. I expected it to taste like that because I've had enough beers flavored with agave nectar. Uh, I'll give you some examples. The Cayman Jack Margarita. That Mazagave from Sierra Nevada. And there's so many others. So you you get used to that. And even Blue Moon, right? Blue Moon made one. So you, I think, so you get used to that unusual, unique agave flavor. So this is rather mild. And this is a bit stronger in the nose. So I think I'm on the right track. Bubbles. Jim Beam, I, I, I have that on my uh, list. Jim Beam Rye. I mean, my to buy list. I tend to enjoy Canadian whiskey better than most bourbon. I find that it tends to be smooth and less corn forward. That's interesting because, you know, Canadian whiskey tends to be mostly corn as well. It's much more like bourbon than unlike bourbon. But they uh, traditionally added higher rye content than bourbon. Although a bourbon can be 49% rye. And Canadian whiskeys tend to tend to use X bourbon barrels. They'll age it in old bourbon. Doesn't have to be a bourbon; could be old rye barrels. Uh, and uh, the third thing is that Canadian whiskeys can use up to 9.9 percent .9 of added flavorings. Could be wine, any kind of wine, sherry, marsala, port. Now that's going to make it taste different. Could be bourbon. Could be brandy. Could be rum, white rum. Could be use gold rum. Could use añejo rum. So black strap molasses rum. So <coughs> that will give Canadian whiskey a wide range of exotic options in flavor. Some you may like, others you may just hate. But you could make a Canadian whiskey exactly like bourbon in every way, but it couldn't be called bourbon because it's made in Canada. If you went across the river one mile, into Detroit and made it, he could call it bourbon. True story. All right, taste. So that's what uh, Crown, Royal, Crown Royal had to do, right? Remember? They said, oh no, it's a bourbon style whiskey. Oh, then it was okay. It was okay. You can make a bourbon style whiskey anywhere in the world and sell it right here in America. 
but they're going to give you trouble. They're going to look for a reason not to let you sell it because the bourbon manufacturer is going to be trying to get the government to come after you. Just like in Japan, you can sell American cars in Japan, but watch what happens when you try. I read so many articles about that. They'll nitpick them to death. Oh, uh, this one can't be sold because um, it was like this little uh, side stripe on the car was like a centimeter off center, like trivial things. Oh, it can't be sold. But they want to dump their cars over here without any kind of question, you see. And that's where some people were saying, oh, no, you got to work it both ways. You want to be tough on us? We're going to be tough on you. Let's play it both ways. That's how, you know, that was the attempt, at least. But it isn't going to happen now. But um, the previous, you know, guys were saying, we'll play tough both ways. Our preference is open trade. You sell all your stuff here, we'll sell all our stuff there. But if you want to be difficult with regulations, then we can play it that way too. Oh, no, no. That's unfair. <laughs> fair is you let us have all the restrictions and you don't have any. That's fair. Makes sense, right? No, doesn't. Doesn't, does it? All right. I'll go back to the comments in a minute. But there's a lot of that stuff, and the reason I'm bringing this up, there's a lot of that stuff in the liquor world, you see. They don't want competition. Uh, okay. They're both spicy. They're both like candy, like a mint candy. I'm, what it said on the Sazerac website, you saw it says anise, licorice, well, that's what licorice for me. Um, and they talk about all these fruit flavors and everything, spiciness and uh, 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 what they said, sugar or something like that. Well, that's what they taste like. Tastes like candy. Hey, you want to drink a liquor that tastes like candy? Here you go. You say, oh, you crazy. This whiskey cannot taste like licorice. Oh, yes, it can. I don't believe I wrote Sazerac's webpage. Of course, now, if you hate licorice, oh, you might hate these. Um, price point is similar. Age, don't know, because there is no age statement on Sazerac. We know it's at least four. Flavor, I wouldn't say they're that different. Okay, proof, 90 versus 86, 45% alcohol versus 43%. Doesn't sound like a big difference, does it? It isn't. But even so, got my eyes closed because I don't want to look at that dark versus light. Even with that said, I think Think, 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 think. This is the uh, Sazerac because I just feel like it's a little, I get a perception that it's a little stronger. Ah, is it better though? See, that's the million dollar question. Well, maybe the $17.99 question, but. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say it's better. I know what people are thinking. There you go, taking up for the big companies. You got to side with Beam Suntory, huh? Over a local company, the small guy. I don't know if I call Sazerac one of the small guys. They're one of the biggest liquor companies in the world, but um, I'm not taking sides. I'm just telling you, I could be a homer, you know? Say, oh, well, their headquarters is in New Orleans, so, oh, yeah, that's way better. You know how that goes. But I don't play it like that. Ooh, the burn, the burn, the burn, the burn. Call Father Marin. Um, why you do this to me, Danny? Um,
I just soon pay the fifteen ninety eight and get the uh, old, old overhaul. That just made a bunch of enemies. Okay, maybe the Sazerac rise two dollars better in a penny. Two dollars and a penny better because that's exactly what I pay difference. Two dollars and a penny more for the Sazerac rye. Okay, it makes sense. It works out perfectly. But well, wouldn't it be a shame if I got them wrong though? <laughs> Let's check it out. If this says OR, I'm gonna feel bad. <gasps> I got it wrong. I got it wrong. I was bitten by a snake. I've been bitten by a snake. I knew something was different. I mean to say, I knew something was missing. I knew something was missing. Okay, well, just goes to show you, I thought this was the, uh, I said, look, it's a little bit better. You saw what I said? It's a little bit better. I said, this is a little bit better than the old overhaul. Ha <laughs> ha, this is the old overhaul. Well, I got it wrong, now I'm two and one. I was two and oh, now I'm two and one. Oh, heck. Hi, Ronald. Hello, Corey. Gary says he hates to sound insane, but I think the future is great beer with a great shot of whiskey mixed in. Just perfect, in my opinion. Smiley face. Hey, well, you may as well jump in the pool, the type of swimming pool you want to swim in. That sounds amazing. <laughs> I'm drinking fireball whiskey. Oh, ooh. <coughs> <coughs> oh, 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 well, enjoy it. Watching Ron makes drinking more enjoyable. That's a fact. I, I, I agree with that. One hundred. No, Vaughn. He says, "What do you think about Coleman's barley wine cognac?" Well, I have no thoughts because I never had it. Twenty percent beer. I'd be scared to try it, but of course, you know, I would. I guess that's pretty risky, risky business. You better talk, call Tom Cruise to be fair has a Ferris wheel. That's right. Well, let me get back to planet Earth now. Hey, Ron, says Ronnie S. Hello to you, Ronnie S. You saw me slip in a little free enterprise diatribe in the middle of this, as I want to do. If I'm not throwing in a bunch of anti-war stuff here and there and everywhere in, embedded in the video. Somebody's probably watching saying, I've noticed something. Your whiskey videos aren't even really about whiskey. Don't say too much. Don't say too much, man. All right. You don't want to let any cats out of any bags. You know what I'm saying? Like Elvis Presley told Steve Martin around 1972, son, you have an oblique sense of humor. <laughs> Told him that backstage after he saw him perform. Son, you have an oblique sense of humor. <laughs> um, well, 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 that's a deep subject. Um, I'm very satisfied with this video, except that I got it wrong. But in a way, I got it right, because by getting it wrong, I got it right. And you say, what do you mean? You're going mad. Man's going crazy. Wrong, wrong. If you could have heard the man just two days ago, if you could have heard him, man, you're going to call him crazy. I missed the dollar trouble. I have to watch it back. Yeah, you know, I always embed those things. But um, the man is clear in his mind, but his soul is mad. And a voice, a voice. He likes you because you're still alive. He's got plans for you. No, but um, what I mean to say is that I got it wrong. But the good thing about this really in a, in a in a sort of quirky way was I was saying uh oh the uh the uh Sazerac rye is a little bit better it, okay it's about two dollars better blah 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 but then I look one little problem it was the overhaul which was better now that was a blind taste test no cheating no favorites so over old old over now I'm only two and one. I got it right twice and I got it wrong once. Two and one. But old overhaul has won three in a row. It's speaking for itself. 
It's won three contests in a row by virtue of its flavor, its quality, and its performance value. It's a battler. Okay. So that is very impressive. When I paid $15.98 for this old overhaul, I said, well, I'm not expecting much at all. I'm sure it's going to be ho-hum, average at the hilt, you know, to the hilt, I mean to say, wrong preposition, and it won't be exciting. Well, wrong, wrong, wrong. And that's the very exciting thing and pleasant thing about doing these because you could just get so fooled. You take a product that you think is going to be awful and it's not. I'll give you another example, the Four loco Electric Lemonade. Now, that's a pretty bad example, right? But it's actually a good example. Because if there's anything you would think, oh, that is so gauche. You know, that is so gauche. Why are you bringing this into this respectable conversation for loco Electric Lemonade? That would be my, that would be my perception as well. That would be my opinion as well. Why would you mention such a thing? You know, we're talking about Manhattan, Annie Hall, bananas, <laughs> and you bring it in a uh, cannonball run. But the the thing about what I'm take, uh, talking about the four local electric lemonade is I thought, oh, what a, you know, what a joke. What a ridiculous joke. In fact, the whole line is a joke. You know, it's no one would ever review that with a straight face and have any kind of positive regard towards it. The highest you could be able to give it is an F, you know, or a D minus. That was my thinking. So I start reviewing them. So then I was stuck because I said, well, you trapped yourself now because you figured it'd just be like a frolic, like, oh, let me do four loco and we'll all get some cheap laughs. But if you go back, go back and watch those videos and you see me tasting it and I'm looking like, mm. you know, I'm looking at my, I know I'm kind of, you can see me thinking off camera like, uh oh, uh oh, because I, then I could, I could start to see that there was a quality, an, an embedded quality, like, this is not terrible, you know, I mean, I know it's supposed to be terrible. And I couldn't say, oh, it's an F because it tastes like a green Jolly Rancher or a green apple Jolly Rancher. No, that's what it was designed to, to taste like. All right. Like literally they made a beer, 14 percent alcohol to taste like a Jolly Rancher green apple. Wouldn't be something I'd be looking to drink. I'm, I'm sure you wouldn't be looking to drink it either. But other people are. Why? I don't know why. You know what I'm saying? I don't like the idea, but I don't have to like the idea. So then I went and tried the. Uh, what I try. The grape, the sour grape, the the sour blue raz. And then recently I tried the electric lemonade. And I said, oh, I was flabbergasted by the electric lemonade. Cause it like literally tasted like lemonade. I don't mean like gourmet lemonade. Oh, we went to the court of two sisters and they had an old lady, 96 years old, that's been making lemonade there since 1941. She handcrafts it from lemons shipped in specially from Extremadura in Spain. I don't mean that kind of lemonade. You know what I'm talking about. Like you went to a state fair and they had the lemonade, you drank it. <clears throat> but it was remarkable. It tasted just like it. I couldn't get over it. And I thought, whoa, I don't know why you would want to make a beer that tastes like lemonade. And furthermore, I don't know why you would want it to be 14% alcohol in a 23 and a half ounce can. You can imagine how I was feeling an hour later, but be that as it may, I felt like I had to give it an A. I must give it an A. I had to give it an A because it tasted exactly like lemonade. And I, 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 And you have to have a certain perspective on it, you see? And if you lose your perspective, then you've lost your channel because you you're trying to score things on what you think they should be instead of scoring them on what they are. You understand my um, philosophical approach. All right, now, um, um, Thirsty, I'm gonna answer these comments. I gotta get something to drink. I mean, like water, you know. So I don't want to lose, I don't want to lose my perspective on this channel. I don't. I won't. 
Unless I do, you know, but I watch some of these other beer reviewers and I watch everybody, you know, me, well, most everybody. And um, some of them are really good. Most of them are really good or at least good. But some of them seem like they get caught up in their own fantasy world. You know, and they're, they get caught up in their own fantasies like they. You know, like when you're a child, you say, I'll be the president one day and you, you're imagining being the president. But they they're, they're starting to believe it, you know, and so I watch them. And they'll be having talks and hangouts. And it's like, what is this? Is this a beer review or, or are they at the uh, the Shriners Hall talking about bringing progress to the world? You know, it's like, oh, one must endeavor to bring progress to this planet. Brothers, let us oh, do whatever. Oh, it's two minutes to midnight, worshipful master. And I'm thinking, what am I looking at? Is this a beer review or am I reading uh, The Secret Doctrine, Doctrine, Volume One, Cosmon, Cosmon, Cos, Cosmogenesis? Am I reading The Secret Doctrine, Volume One, Cosmogenesis? You know, what am I, what am I looking at? So, all right, now, now the uh, comments. Fair has a Ferris wheel. Makes sense. Uh, hey, Ron. I missed the diatribe. I'll have to watch back. Yes, that's a great tube. Celebrate the beauty of the drink. Celebrate life, dudes. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, we're not trying to um, be alchemists. You know what I'm saying? We're just doing beer reviews, wine reviews, liquor reviews. And it's like, you know, it's pedestrian. It's very basic. We're not alchemists. We're not trying to turn gold. You're not, we're not trying to take lead and make it into gold esoterically or practically. Jura is the best whiskey in the world. I've never had it. Mark Lockwood, Jura, say more. Sazerac by a mile, New Orleans pride. Well, I'd like to say that, but it didn't happen. Old overhaul one, sorry. I still think that uh, for a local, even after tasting it, just could never get into that type of stuff. I can't get into it either. I'd never drink it. If you said, I'll pay you a dollar a day to drink well, you'd have to pay me way more than a dollar a day. I wouldn't drink it. I don't care what you'd pay me. I wouldn't drink it. I wouldn't drink it. I wouldn't drink it. I wouldn't drink it. Because I feel like I would die. But I, 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 I had to give it credit where credit was due is what I'm trying to say. I'm in the United Kingdom in Scotland. 50 pounds a bottle in the UK supermarkets. Oh, my goodness. That's high. Is Sazerac a voodoo whiskey? It's not a voodoo whiskey, but if you uh, if you give me a bad, if you make me get angry, I'm gonna make you st 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 stutter. Hi, Ron, watching from New Orleans. Hello, little Zoe. So no, Sazerac is not a voodoo whiskey, but I walk on Gilda Splinters. All right, and I talk to Coco Robichaux. Seventy bottles, bucks a bottle. Oh no. What are your thoughts on club tails? Well, I'm very impressed with those. They even gave me a cap. The company gave me a cap. They watched my videos and said, we're giving this man a cap. So then I liked them even more. No, but really I, I liked them. They were shocked that somebody was actually making videos about their product and not talking about how trash it was. They were like, he likes it. He likes it. He hates everything. No, you know, I was like Mikey with a uh, life cereal. Tuning on in says Joe. Hey, don't worry. This is Joe's dad. <laughs> Hello, Michael, Presto. Uh, I don't, I'm not trying to lose my perspective. Hey, where did I put it? I respectfully disagree and will rate all. Well, you could look at it that way too, of course. <laughs> and it is marketed for that. We know it is marketed for that. But I had to look at it within that context, you see. I agree, Michael, but some people think it's a religion. It's General Trail Stewart. Hello, Stewart. You take care. Well, Stewart's not into hard liquor, y'all, but he's into so many beers. Oh, so many beers. And he's an expert. You say, well, he has no degree in beerology, he has no certificates. 
No, he's an expert based on experience. The School of Hard Knocks. Like myself. You got to drink on it and think on it. Drink on it and think on it. And that's what we do. We drink on it and think on it. We don't make it a religion. Craft beer is treated as religion on YouTube sometimes and IPAs. I, I have, I've noticed for 10 years. I've had Four loco. They sell Four loco in uh, Yorkshire. Oh, you had it when you came to the United States. Yeah. I think they've improved it. I think they've improved it. Uh, I think the company uh, realized that they were being uh, threatened by other higher quality products like the original Club Tales from Canada. MXD mixed from Rochester, New York. All of the Mike's Harder, the Smirnoff Ice Smash, the uh, the uh, the 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 You know, as far as that company is concerned, Michael, I'm like, um, I'm like Paulie and Goodfellas. Now, I got to turn my back on you. Oh, you brought a can back. Oh, back to England. Okay, back to Yorkshire. The school of hard drinking alone during COVID in the UK. Yeah. The United Lockdown Kingdom, right? Terrible, horrible. Boris Karloff, you know, and all of that. I, I was silly when I was in Ohio. Uh, I had been there, apple pie, moonshine, then four loco. Oh, no, 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 no. you telling me you drank the apple pie, moonshine, and then immediately drank four loco? That wasn't silly, uh, Stuart. That was madness. <laughs> you know, that was like danger, 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 danger. Goodfellas is in my top three greatest movies of all time. Yeah. Well, more power to you because I wouldn't have been able to do it. I'd be dead now. All right. If anybody's interested, I'll show you what's coming up. If not, forget about it. You know, we'll turn it off. But if you're interested in, I'll show you what's coming up. If not, let's just call it a show. Forget it. We are all drinking more in the United Kingdom of lockdown at the moment. The hardest lockdown in the world. Yeah, it's terrible. And and you know how they, they'll say, it's a free country, old bean. Jolly ho, it's a free country. Yeah, uh -huh. tell that to the prisoners. Great flick. No, I no, I thought I no, I thought you said I'm I thought you said I'm okay, Spider. I am okay. You're not okay. All right, anyway. Um I've seen it a few times. <laughs> Best live stream that hasn't blocked me yet. See, Gary, I hardly ever block you. Anybody want to see what's coming up? If not, forget it. Oh, Billy Beer Buick. Beer Buick? What is that? People that drink beer in a Buick? No, I'm not, I'm, trying, I'm not trying to be ugly. I don't know Dutch. I cannot speak Dutch, but I bet you I could learn it quickly. Because Dutch and English is like brother languages, you know, sister and brother. I think in English it's sister and brother, and in Dutch it's van sister and van brother. Right. Do you like old English beer? Yes. Well, at least the six percent. I don't think I like that. Eight percent. It's a little too strong for my gullet. But the regular old uh, five point nine. Oh, yes. I'm very pleased with it. But this one here is a little too much. Eight percent. Well, thankfully, it's not sold in the United. It's not sold in Louisiana. Can you imagine drinking 40 ounces of eight percent lager? <laughs> You'd have to be out of your mind. Out of your mind. Man's going crazy. All right. Okay. All right. That's it. So anyway, nobody wants to see what's coming up. I don't care. 
It's just a bunch of liquor. It don't matter. Uh, now go get your shine box. Yeah, he used to shine shoes. I don't know if they must have not told you. Told you that when they came up, when they came to see you, I don't shine shoes no more. All right. Um, it's difficult to get the American beer at the moment due to distribution. I can believe that. I don't see a lot of English beers around here. In fact, do I see any? Come to think of it. Okay. Well, I'm just going to go up against George Dick Rye. Notice it does not say straight rye, just say rye. There's a difference between straight rye and rye, but it's still very good. Daryl Macias say dropping the good stuff, good fellow stuff today. I didn't start that. Everybody was talking about it. Okay, tax laws, Stella down from to 4.6 from 5.2. 4.6 is a tragedy. That's a tragedy. It's 5% in the United States. Remember the box. Scar, the box car here in Canada, we aren't getting our normal shipments of Lone Star. We don't ever get Lone Star in Louisiana, never been sold in Louisiana, to my knowledge. Strange, isn't it? Uh, we did get Pearl beer, but I've not seen it in a store in Louisiana since 1997. Nope, I haven't. Okay, well, so I uh, got George Dickel Rye coming up, and then. When I visited Tom, we paired whiskey with beer. Oh yes, Tom likes whiskey, of course. Um, I have some really interesting things Ancient, ancient age, 10 star. I bought this in Meridian, Mississippi. I've never seen it in Louisiana. Oh, we get ancient age everywhere, but not this gold label. And it's a different glass. Listen to the glass. It's different. It's like a chime. It's 90 proof too. Uh, now, here's a beer from Kansas. The Whiskey Scout gave it to me. Imperial Cast Cuvée. How you like that? Limited release. Oh, bet you that's going to be fantastic. Ale aged in bourbon, rye, and Madeira barrels. Boy, can you believe this thing? 13.8% alcohol, 30 IBUs. Enjoy by November 19th. Well, don't worry. It won't be anywhere near November. It'd be sooner than later when I'm getting to, the, getting to this. Here's the new Dos Equis label. It's pretty, huh? Got a nice neck. New bottle shape. Still 12 ounces though, 355 milliliters. Fresh, fresh, fresh. Oh, 146 calories. It was made on December 20th. Well, it's not that fresh, but it ain't that old either. I did a double down video. I don't know how it came out. It might've been a little too doubled up. You know what I mean? It might've been a little too doubled up, but it was fun. Okay. Gary says, you go, gang. They just stopped making Olympia. He's really ginger, you know, red hair. Cool dude. He ain't come to Louisiana, though. You got to come to Louisiana. Okay. They just stopped making Olympia beer here in Canada. Guess what? They stopped making it in America, too. The United States of America. I'm sorry. You're British North America. They stopped making uh, Olympia beer, period. You know why? Wasn't selling. What do you think about Rolling Rock and Yingling? Well, I like them. There's nothing wrong with being a newbie when it comes to beer. You got to start somewhere. Got to start at the beginning. Can't start at the end. Yeah, Cuvée. Nice, huh? Boy, is it. I, I'm so excited, but I'm saving it for last. You know what I mean? I'm going through like the lesser. You hate to say the lesser products, but you know what I'm saying. Boxcar is a history test. I bet I'd, I bet I'd nail it. I bet I get 100. I recently tried a dark chocolate stout. It was actually fantastic. Oh, those can be incredible. My favorite type of whiskey is Speyside. Oh, very mild uh, scotch. Yes, I like Speyside whiskeys. I have a bunch of those. Well, not a bunch, but I have a little 
a little treasure trove of those. Mark, Firsty Ferret at Badger Brewery, Dorset, England. Hmm. Well, sure hope y'all get out of prison soon. Let's see, Olympia. I went, I did a test today. Uh, some English guys were doing a hangout. They didn't seem too keen on me commenting, but uh, too bad. But um, I was telling them I did a test. I went to a store here today and I didn't wear a mask and nobody said a word. And one of them said, oh, well, they probably figured you had an exemption for being ill. Being, having a, a medical reason. I said, no, it wasn't that. They just didn't care. Yingling. It is a nice one. I've had Olympia dry. Look at this one, y'all. You want to see a crazy one? They made Olympia dry once. I bought it in Baton Rouge. You know they're trying to mimic, you know what they're trying to mimic? Asahi. Same colors. A cheap ripoff of Asahi. But boy, it was good. It was good, actually. Nobody bought it, of course. IBUs are international bitterness units. They're the level of bitterness from zero to 100. Zero would be has no bitterness whatsoever. 100 would be extremely bitter, generally. You can have some high IBU beers that don't seem to be too bitter. But... Um, Usually it's a measure of bitterness, just like alcohol by volume. Uh, this is 13.8 and this is 4.7. So of course, the 4.7% lager from Mexico is gonna be a much milder beer. And you could drink a few, wouldn't matter. But these, oh, don't drink more than one in a few hours. You'd be making a terrible mistake. It's very strong. Don't even think about it. I mean, you could drink one and sip on it like a dessert. It's a uh, very rich. Well, you probably wouldn't be able to take drinking more than one. It'd be too, be like trying to eat butter, you know, <laughs> stick of butter. Uh, it's Three Kings and Ohio small batch lager. Yes, it's so small that most people can't get it. I did see it in Texas for a little while, but it didn't stay around. Never seen it in Louisiana, Little Kings. It's a cream ale. It's a cream ale, about five and a half percent. Good old high life is my go-to. Yeah, I like Miller High Life. But I bought the Dos Equis and Bar because I wanted to do a double down. It was only $13.99 a 12 pack, which I didn't think was terrible. Genesee Lager is okay. It's good. Let's say it's good, but it's a lot of other things are even better. You know what I mean? It's good, but the rest are very good. High life is yummy. Uh Yingling, I mean, uh, Genesee is good, but the Genesee cream ale, I think, is much nicer. And the 12-horse ale, if you ever find Genesee 12-horse ale, which you probably won't ever see, that's the one to get, the 12-horse or the Genesee cream ale. And if you happen to see the Genesee dry-hopped cream ale, I'd recommend it. I've never had it, but I bet it's really something. Uh, oh, no, he's in Yorkshire, England. Not in Ohio. He went to Ohio on a trip with his, his epic trip. He made an epic trip to go see all the guys from uh, Beer Drinkers United. That was an epic trip. I refuse to try Angry A. I don't know what that is. Boris Karloff likes craft ale. He does? All right. Uh, is Budweiser very popular in England? I talked to a guy from England. He was from Wales. In 2011, I was at the Miami Marlins game. Back then, it was the Florida Marlins. And he was saying, uh, oh, yeah, you know, we watch football at the at the pub and all this, him and his friends, you know. I said, oh, you're from Eng England. He said, no, 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 I'm from Wales. I said, oh, okay. He said, but, yeah, that's right next door. He said, well, um, I'm thinking you're from Wales. What do you drink over there in the United Kingdom? I thought he was going to name all these exotic beers. He said, uh, all right, we drink Budweiser mostly. <laughs> I had to laugh. I said, oh, Budweiser, okay. So that's what they drank at the pub when they were watching football. I said, oh, well, just goes to show you. I thought he was going to name like, uh, you know, Abbott Ale, Abbott Ale Reserve. We drink Abbott Ale. We drink Old Tom. Reserve. We drink Black Cat. He said, no, we drink Budweiser. 
I refuse to try Angry Orchard Cider. Oh, yeah, I tried it. Well, it's like apple juice. You want to drink apple juice? Go ahead. But I I can't stand to drink juice, so do you think I want to drink cider? But other people love cider. In England, it's very popular, you see. Calling number one. Dos Equis, yeah, it's a good one. All right, well, I got to get off of here. It's been on it an hour. You know what I'm saying? I got to go do some things. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. It's been fun. Um, got to give old Overholt some credit. Doesn't get much credit, but look what it's done. It's won three in a row. Three blind taste tests in a row against much better regarded products. Now, that should tell you something. Tells me something. Tells me don't believe everything you read or hear. Try it for yourself. Try it for yourself. Thank you. And everyone you take care.